Hello everyone, uh, welcome to my talk. Um, uh, so you want to migrate to the cloud. We just picture the scenario, a lot of the people had the situation where your CIO or CTO or director or anyone of your management team has said, we need to go to the cloud. So how do I go to the cloud? This talk is, is meant to give you some considerations and thoughts on um, uh, things that you've got to think about if you do want to migrate to the cloud and with all the VMware announcements and Cloud Foundation, um, there's a lot more options than ever to be able to do that. Basically the summary, it's hard. <laughs> it's not easy and it's a long journey. So today's topics, uh, I'll go over the context and different uh, ways to migrate to the cloud. Um, I'll cover the business view, um, you know, things to consider from a business perspective, application perspective. Um, I'll cover the network scenarios and some things to think about from the network perspective. Um, I'll cover compute um, and storage as well. So that covers most facets of, the, of, of cloud migrations. So the context. Um, we have different ways to uh, migrate or either do cloud native or migrate to the cloud. Um, obviously you've got the probably the preferred option where everything is looked after for you and you just have to migrate your business processes and data to some sort of software as a service provider, for example. Um, that's probably the easiest option if possible because they look after everything else and you just have to migrate your business processes. Um, the next option is more of a cloud native thing where you're building some sort of platform, some sort of cloud native uh, solution where you have to build your business logic in code um, and also you still have to migrate your data some way or get it to talk to your on-prem data sources. Um, today's discussion is around uh, the last scenario, um, infrastructure as a service and or lift and shift as is. So that would cover bare metal, ESXi scenarios, um, or IaaS is an option as well for those workloads that um, have some sort of uh, HA on top from an application perspective, um, where you can consume, say, EC2 or, um, or uh, soft layer uh, virtual instances, etc., cetera, um, where you don't have to look after the hypervisor. So it depends on the uh, use case or the scenario. So what are the reasons to migrate to the cloud? So you might actually have business reasons to do this. For example, uh, lifecycle management. Um, there may be a whole bunch of old servers, five to 10 year old servers in your data center that you don't want to refresh. You don't, you don't have the money to spend to, to buy new servers. Um, a very valid option is to migrate that stuff off just to, as a forklift process. Um, Agility, uh, you may, this is that I've put maybe there because you don't necessarily get agility by going on the cloud. Um, your business processes, um, your operational model has to change to be able to deal with agility. You can't just keep doing things the way you've done them for the last 20 years um, in the cloud just because you have a cloud there. Um, it doesn't mean you necessarily get more agile. You've got to look at the capabilities of your workloads and make sure your cloud provider of choice has those capabilities. Um, I'll cover those a little bit later on, uh, as, as some examples. Um, and you've got to look at your operational model. So your operational teams um, from a OS and an app perspective um, need to be able to operate things, know how to log into um, OSs and apps and the new way of doing things. So they've got to make sure they've got all their processes up to date to be able to um, handle that. So from a business perspective, uh, you've got software licensing to consider. That's a really big one um, because many software licenses actually don't take into account um, cloud or you have to have specific requirements around dedicated infrastructure. Um, as an example, Oracle there, that's our favorite example. Um, so that usually requires a discussion with your legal department um, or some such. You can have communication. You've got to have 
communication with all your stakeholders, so all your business and application stakeholders, your technology stakeholders, um, need to be aware of what you're doing, why you're doing it, and what, what's the benefit for them, because you need them on the journey, otherwise it's going to be a long, slow process. So they'll need to be involved from planning, testing, all sorts of things. Uh, data security and sovereignty, that's another huge one. Um, your company may have specific policies about certain data not leaving the data center or not leaving the country. You've got to have protections in place with your cloud provider to be able to take that into account. Um, and that's another point, you've got to choose your, uh, your um, cloud provider based on where their data center is. And as long as it's in the same place as your company is, you know, like Europe, for example, data needs to stay within the AU. Um, reliability, when you do a migration, it's important that you don't break the application or you're going to have difficult conversations with your application sponsors later on. Um, when you find out the problem and need to do it again, um, it's important that you plan things properly and if things don't work before you migrate, do dry runs, make sure they work. Uh, network, <coughs> you have different, different um, options for network connectivity. Um, you can either go over the internet with a VPN or you can have direct connect or direct link options into your cloud provider. That's probably usually the best option from a security and reliability perspective. Um, latency, that's a huge one. Um, your cloud provider needs to be relatively close to where your end users are, otherwise um, you'll potentially have latency issues with the application. Um, and also considerations there around migration, make sure your three-tier app um, is all moved together and not spread out in different locations because you'll end up probably, again, breaking the application, having a difficult conversation with your uh, management team later on. Uh, IP addressing, a lot of the time IP addressing is um, uh, hard-coded in legacy applications. A lot of the time you need to be able to bring your own IP um, for example, NSX allows this, um, and also uh, Amazon VPC uh, also allows you to do that. So um, sometimes you don't need to keep the same IP addresses, um, but other times you do. Depends on the situation. Um, and another critically important part is security. Um, your corporate perimeter um, still needs to be um, taken into account, and you don't want to have any unintended backdoors into your environment. Um, and also with encryption, um, you got to check with your uh, security team whether um, you need to have any at rest or in transit encryption. <coughs> Compute, um, so you've got some decisions to be made there whether you use pre-virtualized hosts or bring your own hypervisor onto bare metal. Um, again, depends what you're moving, which option you take. My recommendation is to only use virtualized if you have an ability in your application uh, to be already highly available um, because cloud providers need to do maintenance for their hypervisors so you've got to be able to either spin up a new one somewhere else or already have sort of an active active configuration to be able to handle the load when they do maintenance. If you bring, bring your own hypervisor you have full control over your maintenance efforts so again depends on the use case. Make sure your vCPU and memory allocations are, are correct. Um, you don't want to reduce your application performance um, unintentionally. If a job takes two hours on-prem, you don't want it to take four hours in the cloud. <coughs> Luckily, you can um, increase that on demand in most situations anyway to resolve that issue. Know your workloads. Um, you've really got to collect your metrics before and after to know if you're um, successful or not in the end. And if there's problems later on, you can go back and um, have a look and um, see where things went right or wrong or what you need to do next time. Storage. Um, got to take into account data transfer charges. Many cloud providers charge for that. So you've got to look at an efficient way of uh, moving data in and or out. Um, storage performance is really critical. Um, you've got to make a decision around local 
uh, volumes or sound volumes depending on your um, storage requirements and you've got to, if you need NFS or SIFS um, file shares, um, you've got to take that, figure out how to provide those services. If you've already got a whole lot of that on-prem, you'll have to move all that data over into some other sort of storage device in the cloud, like a Next Center or a NetApp Virtual, for example. Um, data transfer tooling, you've got to be, um, figure out, automate all your data transfers and um, figure out how long things are going to take um, so you can plan your uh, migrations accordingly. So in summary, um, make sure you've got good stakeholder management, um, make, keep them up to date, give them the benefits, um, fail fast, if something doesn't work, try it again, um, try it in a different way, um, and also be iterative, so choose, um, choose some small workloads and build your way up, don't try and boil the ocean straight away. That's it, thank you very much.